I've just arrived at Minak Theatre, which might sound like, oh, it's a theatre, but no, this is, this is a crazy view, a really fascinating story, and I'm just sort of blown away just looking at what we're looking at here. Oh. Hey. <laughs> What is this? I've got nothing to say. We're at Land's End, which is only about a five minute drive around from the theatre. The views are absolutely mind blowing, but the wind. Good morning from Cornwall. It is day four of five, which is sad because it is, is very quickly coming to an end as we near day five and head back to London. We're staying in an area called Falmouth, which is where we got to last night after we finished up in St. Ives. So we're staying in the Trelawney uh, B&B, but the weather is just not playing along. I think we're gonna be okay. I think it's gonna come right. But this is the England that we were expecting. And it's only about 10 degrees at the moment, but it's not raining right, oh, you know, as I see drips coming down. It's not, it's not raining right now, is it? It's raining. Is it? It's raining. Yeah. But it'll be okay. It looks, we better, can it looks better out this window. We can still explore on the rain. Exactly. Ooh. Wow. Ooh, that's fresh. Feel that. Okay, it most definitely is raining. How are you? Very good. Very good. Morning, mate. Good morning. Where's How the are sunshine? You? How are you? You're alright. <laughs> we lost it. We lost it. We lost it. Little bit of a washout. This isn't too bad. I mean, it's definitely even worse than this. So a little bit of light rain all day is, yeah, no, we've got to, got to go with what we've got. This morning, um, I want to take you guys to a very beautiful, beautiful little spot. And um, all about the story of Rowena Cade and her gardener, Billy Rawlings, of course. <laughs> it's windy and rainy. So we've just driven through Penzance and I've got some incredible stories that I want to share about that and about the story so behind Pirates of Penzance. Yeah, you've got a really interesting one. But before we do that, we'll find a time for that later because we've just arrived at Minak Theatre. Hey. <laughs> what is this? I've got nothing to say because I'm speechless. Wow. Can you see how clear the water is on camera? Uh -huh. Wow, that is actually insane. I did not expect that. Wow, it is so windy. Sorry for any noise. Some stairs down there as well. That beach down there is Porth Kerno, which is apparently rated in the top 20 beaches in the world. Although they say it sort of comes with a little bit of a, um, a disclaimer. It's more about the setting and the scene of this whole area. And it's not necessarily the most beautiful, but it's like, it's really, really nice sand, clear water, and apparently the best beach in England anyway. On a nicer day, I can completely understand why. is going to look like today but this is what it looks like on a nice sunny day we're just going to um, go through the exhibit before we actually go down into the theater and learn some of the, the history first i guess so rowena cade who dane just pointed out and her gardener are the two people that actually made this happen and i don't know how they managed it because it is pretty impressive yeah so they um they carved out this open air theatre into like a granite cliff, cliff face, yeah. Overlooking the water, it kind of looks a little bit like a Roman it look, theater. It reminds me a lot of the ones that we've seen, like the, like some the of one the, in Plovdiv. Yeah, the one in Plovdiv in yeah. Bulgaria. So the the story goes that it was Rowena and her gardener who Created. had a beautiful garden, a beautiful area right here on the cliff face, and they started hosting a play, and they invited people from neighbouring you know, towns and villages to come and watch this play in their garden. And it was so successful, they were like, well, let's continue this thing. I think was there was a bigger traveling production was coming through and they needed somewhere to house an even bigger situation. And so they were like, well, let's just build it on this rock face. <laughs> very, what a job. Ca very casual about it. And then apparently word spread. And so these people that had come and watched the original plays and from these other neighborhoods and surrounding villages started coming and helping build. And they were moving this granite and they were carving it all themselves, moving it in wheelbarrows. And now, I mean, look at this. It now 
it's still here today with a ridiculous view you can see there's lighting and production and everything completely set up it is insane i mean they've carved all of this themselves as well That was Stace inside the cafe there. She's jumped in, it's so cold. We're just going in for a Cornish cream tea, not an English cream tea, because they're separate. Cornish cream tea and a coffee. Tasty? In case you haven't managed to pick up yet, we're at Land's End, which is only about a five minute drive around from the theatre. This is the most southwest you can possibly get on the island, in England as a whole. The views are absolutely mind blowing, but the wind will literally blow your mind out of your head. It is so freezing and so strong. And I don't think that's just us being weaklings because we travel for the sun all the time. I think it genuinely is cold. Even the locals seem to be really rugged up. I'm just hiding here behind this little wall so that I can take in the view that's here. It's brilliant. Sand. <laughs> I like this. Look how big this is a two litre bottle. Scrumpy cider. I think we need both of these. I think we do. We're not very good at this cold. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we before we finish up today's video and we because we're heading back very shortly, I think we need to go and warm up. You're getting blown away back here. Okay, so the pirates of Penzance. There used to be taxes on um, luxury items, luxury items, things like brandy and rums and alcohols and all sorts of stuff. So what people started doing was heading on boats, going to places like Jamaica and other spots in Europe to smuggle back in and drink a lot of, no doubt, <laughs> and then sell them for a cheap price to avoid paying tax and to make lots of money. Clever. Then there was bounties that were put out on these people, on these pirates, because they were breaking the law. And these bounty hunters used to just go and just basically shoot them because it was dead or alive. So they would just shoot them in the back, take them to London, and make money off the industry. And it all just sort of fed itself. But the even better story. Another pirate news. <laughs> I thought that, that I thought that the pirates of Penzance sounded really familiar, and that's because. And then I messaged my mum, and there's a story on my granddad's side that they're somehow related to our family, like their ancestors. Me, your, a, your family. There's absolutely no proof. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Someone's <laughs> just claimed it. But, I mean, that's what I've been told growing up, that... Your family, they're, you're, you're a pirate. I'm a, I'm, I'm a pirate. Wow, we must have changed the name of our channel. D Danger and Pirate. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're delirious. <laughs> yeah, we've got to get out of the cold. We're going to wrap this up. We're heading back to London tomorrow, but we've still probably got a little bit more to film that we will share 
Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> we'll catch you in the comments. Bye. Bye.